Welcome to the CIP Masterclass. I am Adil, and we at Chemtex at Lab Value. As one of the nation's leading experts in chemical technology, the proud to present this course, which provides in depth knowledge of the CIP process, enabling you to become a certified CIP expert, which means that your business will not only experience improved and consistent hygiene, but also Reduce downtime, improve productivity, longer equipment lifespan, and of course, substantial energy savings. All this knowledge in just 15 minutes. So, let's get started. CIP or Clean in Place is a method to clean and sanitize equipment or systems without the need for disassembly. It involves the use of specialized equipment and cleaning agents to streamline the cleaning process. This results in the removal of residues, microorganisms and other contaminants, ensuring that the equipment is ready for the production of the next batch or product. Overall, it's an important process for maintaining hygiene, quality and safety. It has applications in various industries such as food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology and manufacturing. In this course, we shall be discussing the CIP process in a brewery. Components of CIP This module refers to the components in a brewery that require the CIP process. In a brewery, various tanks, vessels and pumps such as brewing kettle or mash tun, mixing kettle, louter tun, whirlpool tank, plate heat exchanger, fermentation vessels, cooling systems, etc. require this process. CIP is particularly useful for such kinds of equipment which might be difficult to disassemble and clean separately as it eliminates the need for time-consuming dismantling and reassembly. In this section, we'll be discussing the CIP process. Now, the procedure itself is definitely important, but choosing the right products is equally important as well, because your choice of cleaning agents can significantly impact the effectiveness of the cleaning process, the safety of the equipment and the final product, and the overall efficiency of the operation. Keeping this in mind, let's dive into the details. The first step is pre rinse This is the initial step in CIP, and involves thorough rinsing of equipment or surfaces before proceeding with the main cleaning and disinfection steps. This is done because it prepares the equipment for more intensive cleaning phases in the future by ensuring that the cleaning agents can come into direct contact with the surfaces without being hindered by debris, dirt or residues. Usually, it's carried out using hot water which is heated to about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius using spray balls. The rinsing is done for about 15 to 20 minutes and the water is then simply drained out. 15 to 20 minutes of rest time should be allowed for CO2 removal after pre rinse. The next step is alkaline cleaning. This step uses an alkaline solution to remove all types of oily, greasy and fatty residues from the equipment surface which are otherwise difficult to remove through normal cleaning. Caustics are generally used in such situations. While caustic soda or sodium hydroxide can be used, there are also several disadvantages, like it can leave behind harmful residues which, when coming in contact with food ingredients, can be toxic. Other issues that come with caustics are high foaming and low spreading ability. All of these affect the cleaning process and can damage the equipment. To deal with such situations, we recommend a specialized product called Alstaclean CP90, which is based on caustic potash and also has a sequestrating, an anti-foaming and a wetting agent in it. It can be considered as a single stage cleaner, meaning no acidic neutralization would be required post this. Now, normally with caustic, residues are bound to form. These residues can be removed only through acid neutralization process where an acidic solution is circulated. But with CP90 in application, normal hot water rinsing is enough until the pH of the rinse becomes neutral. A subsequent microbial assessment can be conducted to check for microbial contamination. We begin by making a 2-3% to solution of Alstaclean CP90 with water. The volume of the solution would be 10% of the total tank capacity. So if the tank capacity is of 100 litres, 10 litres of the solution would be used. Then, the solution is to be circulated at 70 to 75 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes and then drained out. 
after this, microbial assessment is conducted. Step 3. Post-alkaline cleaning. After the alkaline cleaning process, this step is taken to ensure that any residues of contaminants and other substances are effectively removed from surfaces and equipment. This can be done by rinsing the entire equipment with hot water heated at 90 to 95 degrees Celsius for 2 to 5 minutes and then drained out. Acidic cleaning or neutralizing. This process is used to remove all organic and inorganic deposits like alkaline residues and beer stones that might appear in the equipment surface after 3 to 4 brews. Usually, nitric acid is used as it's a well-known steel passivator. However, the issue with nitric acid is that it has health risks as it produces fumes and it's highly corrosive. We recommend the use of Alstaclean CP3, a combination of nitric and phosphoric acid which effectively removes all sorts of inorganic contaminants from the surface. CP3 is incorporated with a corrosion inhibitor as well, which is a major strength of this product. Due to this specialization, there are hardly any chances of flash rusting that generally occurs after acidic cleaning. We do this by making a solution of 0.8 to 1% of Alstaclean CP3 in water. The volume of the solution would again be 10% of the total tank capacity. Then, the solution has to be simply circulated in the equipment at 70 to 75 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes and then drained out. To bring the pH to neutral levels, the equipment can be rinsed with RO water at ambient temperatures. The next step is sanitization. This process involves removing the microbes on surfaces to reduce the risk of contamination or infection. Hot water or steam can be used for this process. But the issue is that you need it in large amounts. For this, you need fully operational boilers or steam generators. But this can be replaced by a food grade disinfectant called Alcesan Active, which is based on paracetic acid and other food grade disinfectants. The advantage with this product is that you don't need hot water or steam. And also, it does not require post rinsing. Just dilute with any water available near you and cures. Alcesan Active is non-toxic and has been certified non-hazardous by NDRI Karnar. This can be done by simply diluting 0.2 to 0.5% by volume and spraying or circulating at ambient temperatures for at least 20 to 25 minutes, which means about 200 milliliters for a 100 liter tank. The solution needs to be kept inside the vessel until taking the next brew. Now, no more rinsing is required and we're good to go for the next brew. Frequency. Now, let us understand the frequency of CIP cleaning. Each equipment has its own distinct usage and so is its CIP process. CIP after each brew is required for mash kettle, mixing kettle, louter tun, plate heat exchanger, fermentation tank and bright beer tank. CIP after 5 to 6 brews can be done for whirlpool tank. Equipment such as heat exchangers require a slightly different approach. During a CIP of a heat exchanger, a cleaning solution is circulated through the heat exchanger using pumps and a controlled flow. The cleaning solution, often a mixture of water and cleaning agents, is designed to dissolve and remove the deposits and contaminants. The process typically involves several steps including pre-rinsing, circulation of the cleaning solution, intermediate rinsing and final rinsing to ensure that all traces of cleaning agents are removed. However, the circulation must be done in reverse. An additional piece of information that I'd like to share is the use of glycols. For maintaining low temperatures in fermenters and cooling tanks, cooling jackets are used when normal propylene glycol is circulated to achieve required cooling temperatures. But propylene glycol, after a point of time, oxidizes into five organic acids which corrode the metallurgy. Here, we would recommend a pre-inhibited formulation of the same, that is Toner Frost 593, which is acceptable for use as a heat transfer fluid even where there is a possibility of incidental food contact or HT1. You can verify it from the NSF White Book itself. CIP principles. CIP principles are put in place to streamline the process and to make sure that the procedures are done seamlessly. We'll be discussing two principles. 
First, monitoring and validation. Monitoring and validation are a crucial aspect of the CIP processes that ensure the effectiveness, reliability, and safety of the cleaning and sanitization procedures. This involves sampling, testing, and analysis. Let us check all the monitoring parameters one by one. Plain water rinsing or hot water rinsing needs to be done through spray balls. 15 to 20 minutes of rest time should be allowed for CO2 removal from fermenters and bright beer tanks. Post alkaline cleaning, the hot water rinsing should be carried out using soft water or RO water. The discharge water needs to be checked by phenolphthalein indicators until the pH comes to neutral before starting the acidic cleaning or sanitization process. Microbial analysis of the discharge water can be carried out by any of the various processes such as swab test, ATP bioluminescence, etc. Post acid cleaning, rinsing with normal soft water or RO water should be done. Discharge water has to be collected from various sample points such as sample valve, racking valve, bottom or drain line and it can be checked by pH paper until it comes to neutral. Post sanitization, microbial testing needs to be carried out. Do not drain the sanitization water immediately. Drain it just before the starting of the next batch. Special attention must be given to the stagnant areas so as to ensure that they are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized during the CIP process. This is termed as dead leg cleaning. Number two, safety. This involves proper storage, labeling, and handling of cleaning agents and chemicals. All personnel involved in CIP operations should wear appropriate personal protection equipment or PPE, such as gloves, safety goggles, aprons, and respiratory protection, depending on the chemicals used and the hazards present. COP process. Now, we know that we've taken care of our equipment, but even after all these steps, what if some contamination still remains? Well, this is where COP or clean out of place comes in. Certain parts of an equipment can be disassembled and cleaned separately. This allows for effective cleaning of surfaces, inner components and hard to reach areas within the equipment. Outer surfaces of the vessels are cleaned by CXT7 by spraying and mopping to attain shiny surface. For heavily dirty surfaces, we can use 10% solution of Deadpool B300. The microbrewery floor can be cleaned by CX2 solution with a dosage of about 20 ml in 1 liter of water and can be done using floor mops. Alstaclean CL90, a foaming alkaline cleaner, can be used for valves, fittings, and fillers. Alcro BC51, a biocide based on dibromoacetonitride, can be used for disinfecting RO water. Conclusion This brings us to the end of our course. A well implemented CIP strategy not only enhances productivity and product quality, but also demonstrates a commitment towards safety, hygiene, and environmental sustainability. Now that you have the required knowledge, you can go ahead and find the link in the description box, quickly answer some questions, and get your certificate. Once again, I'm glad to have had you on board. Thank you. Happy brewing.